Hey Eagle Pilots, Dusty here with a video covering the updates coming to the F-15C for BMS Update 5 4.37. So the updates to the F-15 basically surround the MPCD SIT page and Link 16. So obviously the Viper received pretty significant Link 16 updates in this release. And so in parallel, the F-15C has been updated, but with the symbology and uh, systems specific to the F-15C suite that we're attempting to model. The first uh, the first changes that we're going to talk about uh, basically have to do with the castle switch on the stick. So it's analogous to the display management switch on the F-16 and uh, its functions have largely changed. So right now we've got the uh, VSD uh, has the TDC cursor uh, displayed on it. And previously we used to use uh, castle up and down to change TDC priority between the two displays, but now more accurate to the F-15C that we're modeling, uh, castle up toggles uh, between them uh, only. So right now we can see we've got the cursor uh, displayed on the BSD and the green ghost cursor on the sit. Now if I press castle up, you're gonna notice the cursor disappears from the BSD and we have here the white cursor uh, centered on own ship position which we can now slew on the sit display. One of the best quality of life updates is that the sit range is no longer tied to the BSD range so we can do what's known as uh, TDC bumping. If I slew the cursor up we're going to be able to zoom out and if we slew down we can zoom the display in castle right it toggles between descended which is what we're in now and then centered mode and we can still range bump in centered mode as well we also have uh, the expanded mode uh, still functions uh, similar to what it uh, is now although we have some bug fixes uh, with the expanded mode it's still heavily work in progress so there'll be more features uh, or more accurate features for the expand mode coming but right now the expand mode castle left it basically zooms to a, a 10 nautical mile sit display over the cursor position so right now i've just slewed the cursor over to this group here there's uh, some hostile surveillance, surveillance tracks looks like they're at 20 something thousand can't quite tell so i'm going to zoom in on them with castle left and i can see now quite clearly that it's a two ship at uh, 25,000 feet. Castle left again will toggle back out of expand mode to uh, whichever mode you're in before. So we can slew over these uh, friendly surveillance tracks at 21,000 and again break out that's a, uh, a two ship. Castle aft toggles between formation mode which is probably the second most important quality of life update. You can see in Cyan uh, the formation members, the, uh, the three other wingmen uh, of my flight, and in the current zoom mode, I can't really tell what formation they're in, or I can't really see exactly uh, how they are positioned. Instead of manually range bumping down to a lower zoom to see where they're at, I can just toggle castle aft, which will zoom in a centered mode to the minimum zoom level possible that shows all three wingmen. So in this case, it's uh, 10 nautical miles, but it also automatically adjusts to keep everybody in the frame. So if uh, three and four were to keep going on their trajectory out here, as soon as they got past the uh, compass rows, the sit display would automatically zoom out to keep them in the frame. If we go back to the menu page, we have auto range here, which is unboxed by default. If you box, oops, if you box, doesn't want to do it for some reason. That's because I'm in formation mode. So if I come out of formation mode, if I go to the uh, menu page there, we can box auto range and that will tie the sit display range to the uh, the VSD. Also, if you're on any MPCD page that is not the sit display, we now have a shortcut to go straight to the uh, sit display hands-on. So either castle aft or castle right will bring the MPCD straight to the sit display. So I'm gonna go from the menu page, I'm gonna go castle right and boom, we're in, uh, back in the uh, the sit. We also have many symbology updates for the Link 16 uh, surveillance tracks. So now yellow, yellow dash squares indicate unknown slash presumed friendly 
surveillance tracks. So obviously you're not going to engage anything that's yellow and this replaces the white uh, unknown surveillance tracks. That's uh, not really a thing in the F-15. So anything that's unknown, it will be uh, appear as a yellow uh, surveillance track. But we still have the red dashed Doritos. Uh, I'm going to expand on this guy. So we still have the red dashed Doritos to indicate a hostile surveillance track. Friendly surveillance tracks are now displayed a lot more accurately by a small uh, dashed green circle. Uh, so that shows a friendly surveillance track. That might be a non-link uh, participant, for example. PPLIs are displayed. Uh, so these are friendly Link 16 equipped uh, players. Uh, they are displayed with the same size icon as a wingman, but they have a P or Papa uh, displayed in the center of their circle. We do have the Igloo, uh, which is a, a known neutral uh, surveillance track, uh, but those uh, those will be fairly rare. You'll need to be in a campaign environment that has a neutral force uh, for those Igloos to be displayed. Okay, moving on from the surveillance tracks, uh, we now have an initial implementation of fighter tracks and the uh, fighter channel in the BMS Link 16 architecture. Right now we have uh, some hostile and one unknown surveillance track out there and I can I have these guys in search on my radar as well. Now I'm going to manually acquire the easternmost contact here via a, a TDC depress and if we go to the SIP page you'll notice that we have now a lock line. This is an own ship lock line, which is indicated by a solid line. Castle up to toggle to the sit display, and I'm going to then castle left to expand. We have superimposed on these surveillance tracks a solid white square, which indicates a fighter track. So this is actually generated by my own onboard radar, but fighter tracks can be generated by uh, the offboard radars, like uh, in this case, in the F-15's case, the, the radars of your wingmen. From uh, this STT lock that I have, auto acquisition aft into track while scan, and you'll notice that now I have multiple fighter tracks that are built as these are all uh, track files on my radar. If I use the uh, multifunction switch up to start stepping between these contacts, you'll see the lock line is uh, changing with them. And if I employ against them by shooting an AMRAM, you'll see the lock line change to a shot line. So a flashing solid line indicates a shot line. Uh, now if I step to the next guy, you can see I have the lock line and the shot line from the previous missile that I've shot. And if I shoot this guy as well, now I have two shot lines. And let's repeat the process. So now I have four shot lines indicating four missiles in flight to this uh, four ship that's up ahead of us. The F-15C can support up to eight shot lines at uh, any one time. So they still need to be remain within the uh, scan volume of your radar. Eventually they will get purged from the system, uh, particularly if you, you'll notice if you turn cold, you still get a few seconds of SA, uh, but eventually you can see that they'll get dropped. So now let's play out the same scenario, but instead of using uh, my own radar, let's just uh, target our wingman. So you can see my own ship lock line, and then I'm going to request two to target this guy. So two, attack my target, and now we see two, a dashed line coming from two, which indicates his lock line. So I'm going to drop this, and then I'm going to get three and four to target the eastern group. So element, attack my target. And now we see that three and four have both sorted three, on welcome. this guy. And four, you never know, we might get lucky and four might target the eastern. But as we press in, eventually when our wingmen engage, we will see the dashed lock lines turn into dashed flashing three, lines, three long. indicating two, a shot three line. Long. So three and two have both shot, and now we can see that their lines are flashing. Four has not yet shot. So his uh, line is still just uh, speak of the devil. And there we go, we're going to employ our crank here. And you'll notice that I, I, my radar is still in search, but we've got the yellow squares uh, from, of the fighter tracks coming from uh, the wingman. Eagle 1's off high to press.
So guys, I really hope you enjoy these new features for the F-15C coming in BMS 4.37 Update 5. There's lots more work to be done and plenty more bugs to be fixed. But I think you'll find that these Link 16 features really help with your situational awareness and the MPCD SIT features help your overall employment in BVR. Please note that this is just the first iteration of the Link 16's fighter channel and all of that associated uh, data. So that will be improved upon in future releases. And we've got big plans for the F-15C. We'd love to see a completely new radar model, uh, updates to IFF and so much more. So please stay tuned and thank you very much. My uh, eternal gratitude to Tiago for his tireless work uh, on the F-15C and the entire rest of the BMS dev team for their hard work. Is he not dead? Not really. Uh, two television, one press. Eagles break right. Eagle one's engaged. Flash. Oh, there we go. Splash one. Eagles reference north. 